So today let's test the 120 bloody watt USB charger from AliExpress for just three dollars, including shipping. The model number is KO71. The input is a universal mains voltage 100 to 240 volts AC 50 or 60 Hz 0.5 amps, and the output is USB C 5 volts 3 amps or 9 volts 2.25 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps. And USB A 3.6 to 6.5 volts 3 amps or 6.5 to 9 volts 2 amps or 9 to 12 volts 1.5 amps. And USB C plus USB A 5 volts 3.4 amps. 120 watts maximum. Do these things actually add up to 120 watts? It would be the sum of the voltages times the currents. But their math just doesn't seem to work here. But anyway, let's try to plug it in. No explosion. Let's plug this one in. USB tester 5 volts, the other USB A port 5 volts. Let's plug my test load into it and let's try to load it. 5 volts, 1.6 amps, 2 amps and shutting down. Wasn't it talking about 3 amps? The other USB port is the same. Let's try to test the USB C ports. The same again. Are all the ports in parallel actually? Two amps. Let's do some charging protocol detection. Automatic detection. It really detected a lot of it, didn't it? Let's try to detect on the USB C port. Absolutely nothing to detect here. But now there's time probably to open it. Just out of curiosity. Nothing. But now, can I somehow open it? Let's cut the corner. It definitely contains a lot of cut corners inside of it anyway. And that's it. The whole thing. Not much of it in it, is it? You should also try to weigh it. 50 grams only. Actually, these 50 grams Include this 9.5 gram weight or 10 grams, but 10 Chinese grams are actually 9.5 actual grams. That's the charger without the weight in it, and there's really not much of it in it. The mains comes in here via this tiny inrush resistor, which might be fusible. Then it goes into this primary smoothing capacitor and a micro 400 volts. Here's the primary switching chip, a snubber network for the primary winding made of this diode, this resistor, this resistor, and this ceramic capacitor. Here's the startup resistor. Here's the diode rectifying the auxiliary winding and producing a low voltage on the primary side to power the chip. This is smoothed by this capacitor. And here's the current sensing resistor and a voltage divider to sense the voltage on the primary side using the auxiliary winding and there is no optocoupler so it can't even change the voltage. Without an optocoupler the secondary side can't ask the primary one for more voltage so this is 5 volts only. Here's the transformer, switching transformer with a ferrite core. Here's of course the bridge rectifier before the smoothing capacitor on the primary side. Then the secondary side. The secondary of the transformer goes via this synchronous rectifier chip it goes into this smoothing capacitor, which is only rated 10 volts, so it couldn't supply 12 volts anyway. Here is its discharging resistor, and no more components here. And these USB ports, the USB-C ports are on some boards with some resistors, but you can see no chip on the boards for the USB-C ports. And of course some see-through solder joints with not much solder on them. Nice. Here's the isolation distance between the primary and secondary side, slightly under 2 mm. And this non-safety capacitor between the primary and secondary side, instead of a class Y1 capacitor as it should be, is just an ordinary 1 kV capacitor 2.2 nano. Here's the marking on it. There is no sign of an interference suppression. Other than this capacitor, which also makes it much more dangerous. If this one fails short circuit, the main voltage basically gets to the output. Now let's put it back together and keep it running at full load for a couple hours.
Of course, by the time in a 120 watt charger fully loaded at 10 watts. And let's see what happens. After three hours still working and able to supply two amps. And of course some thermal imaging, about 50 degrees Celsius on the surface. Quite low for such a questionable thing. 40 something on this side. Now the internals. Of course let's do it as dodgy as I can do it. The transformer is about 87 degrees Celsius, quite hot. This electrolytic capacitor, the synchronous rectifier 97 degrees Celsius, and the switching chip 83. Also the resistor in the snubber network is getting hot and the diode. I guess it's enough. Now let's desolder the transformer and see how safely the windings are isolated. Which basically means how safely the output is isolated from a mains. Using this of course. Let's remove the tape from it. Here's the ferrite core. A melted hair dryer. Now the flyback switching transformer is opened. Let's explore the isolation in between the windings. First removing the isolation on top of the windings to get to them. And this is probably the auxiliary winding. Here are the terminals of the auxiliary winding, and of course this winding is connected with the primary side, and the last turn or first turn of it is very close to the ends of the secondary here and here. Especially this spot is quite concerning. Let's remove the auxiliary winding from it. Then there is some insulation tape, one layer, two layers and the secondary under it. It's made of two parallel wires. One winding and the other parallel section here. Surprisingly it's not aluminium. And there was of course nothing to keep the secondary from the ends of the primary here. They're completely exposed. And two layers of insulation and the primary. And it's all a regular transformer wire. No safety triple or thick insulation. Just the super thin lacquer 0.00 something millimeter thick. This one is not for applications where its failure causes an electric shock. There was the insulation tape between the windings but there were still a couple spots where it could be insulated just by the lacquer. And they're apparently using the same type of capacitor for this snubber network and for this capacitor between the primary and secondary side to save money. So let's sum it up. This non-safety capacitor in a safety critical spot, the insulation between the primary and secondary side should be more than two millimeters definitely. The transformer insulation is insufficient. There's just about no interference suppression. I'm not sure if this resistor is fusible or not to prevent the risk of fire. And it can only supply five volts to amps, which is 10 watts. So it's inflating its power rating by the factor of 12. And of course the conclusion is... DOGY! So that's it, another electrocution interference generator. And the ratio of the claimed watts to real watts keeps growing. And if you like my videos please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on a Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. This channel couldn't exist without your support.